Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing okay. Today I wanted to share with you a few days at my desk. I'm very happy because I finally bought a kind of tripod that clips on my desk for my phone so I can film top-down videos. The first clips of this video were filmed with my camera and my usual sideways setup because this was the only way I had to show you what I was doing in my notebooks. But the rest of the video is going to be my, my top-down shots and I hope you like it. I think the quality is okay. I had been hesitating upon buying a tripod for my phone because I thought that the camera quality wasn't good enough for videos, but I think it's alright. The sound is not alright though. This is why I'm doing a voiceover instead of speaking while I'm working. And also, I've always found it difficult to do things on camera while I had my tripod in the way. And for example, in this shot, I had one arm looped around the base of the tripod of my camera to be able to write and still be in the shot. And I had to have my uh, different lamps to be in focus and this was not relaxing. Whereas with the tripod for my phone, it's clipped to my desk, it's over my head, and I don't even notice it because I don't have to stop every half an hour to start filming a new clip like my camera needs and I've been able to craft and not being self-conscious about being filmed while I'm crafting so I've been enjoying filming myself doing these notebooks videos much more. All that to say that I hope you like this video. Uh, what I'm doing right now is updating my film notebook. I didn't take my film notebook with me while I was away in Canada for four months and I had quite a few things to add to it. I've been using this notebook for I'd say 10 years and it's a very simple setup as you can see. I just write the name of the movie, the year it was made and where I watched it. Was it on a plane, on Netflix, who was I with? And I really like this minimal setup. I also have lists of movies I want to watch and sometimes I have little statistics, how many movies did I watch this year, how many were classics like made in the 40s. I also have some pages about some TV shows I watched. The new thing I wanted to do with this notebook was to have a page with all the posters from the movies and have little like reviews about them and I really liked the result. Because I was filming and writing sideways, you don't notice it on the camera, I think, but in reality, the pictures are all sideways. So I will have to redo these pages, but I really like how it comes together. I liked that I was able to have a little review under it, because sometimes uh, when I just see the name of a movie in my list, I do not remember what the movie is. For example, for The Wonder, I do not remember what the, the film was about. with my new setup. On this day I had just received my new scrapbook. You've seen my daily scrapbooks before and usually they're square but the place where I usually buy my scrapbook which is the discount store called Action hasn't had any of those square craft scrapbooks in months so I haven't been able to buy them here and they're really cheap. They're like 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters and they're three or four euros, so this is, yeah, nothing competes. And 
Even if I wanted to buy like similar scrapbooks online, I did not find any scrapbook that was 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters. And finally, I settled on this uh, rectangular one by Claire Fontaine. I'm not sure how I'm going to bond with it. I hope I really like using it uh, in the long run because because it's smaller, I'm not sure I'll be able to do my usual layouts. And what I've been doing with my day scrapbook since I started them was adding one of the stickers I like to buy on the side and uh, writing uh, the title on the, the cover. I decided to use my uh, label maker from a discount store and I would not recommend buying a cheap label maker at Action because this has been a pain to use. It's, yeah, it doesn't, as much as I fiddle with it, it doesn't work properly, so I decided to embrace it and have a daily scrubber blue blue book on my cover. I decided to use uh, those plant stickers from Recollections that I bought at Michael's in Canada, and this Please Grow is a subtle nudge to myself to uh, grow up and something, so I thought it would be a nice uh, reminder to have on my cover. And I thought this Hoya sticker really went well with uh, the color of the Please Grow sticker. Another day, another scrapbook session. I'm really pleased that I was up to date in my scrapbook while I was away because this meant I only had a few days to catch up on when I started scrapbooking again. I was really happy to be back home and have all of my supplies, my stamps, my little baskets and neatly labeled pockets with all my stickers. That meant I was able to spend more time on decoration and this was so nice to be scrapbooking again. Also because it's December I'm allowed to use my Christmas stickers and I love them. I remembered I had seen in my stash um, a sticker with uh, wrapping paper and presents on it and I knew it would be perfect for my picture of wrapping presents. You didn't see that, but um, when I stamped a date, uh, I stamped the 22nd, but it was the 21st or Wednesday, so I had to correct it. And the way I did it was to cut down a bit of craft paper I took at the end of the scrapbook and glue over the wrong date. It bugs me a little because it's not as neat as it would have been if I hadn't made a mistake, but it's the best solution I have. I remembered I had kept some of the strands uh, of the string I had used to wrap my present and I thought it would be a nice ephemera to add to my scrapbook. Because there were small strands I did not have, it was a bit difficult to use just masking tape to put it down, so I used some packing tape, some craft packing tape to secure it and then over it I used some Christmas masking tape that I bought at Michael's. And then I thought that these uh, stamps would be perfect to add decoration to my page. And these stamps, I could use them, uh, these are uh, stamps from the USA and that a friend gave me. And they're birds in the snow and 
they they are just so cute i could use them to send cards if i were in the us but i i just love them so much i just wanted to use them in my notebooks so i first used some a stamp with two golden crowned kinglets and i'm going to add another stamp because first i thought that i would add some stickers but and rushed myself with the stamps but they're so beautiful that the next day when I was continuing scrapping I couldn't resist using a beautiful uh, cedar wax wing on my page. As you can see I have to draw lines on my page because I'm incapable of writing straight if I don't do that and sometimes I try not to do the, ra to do the lines because it takes a lot of time but then I'm not happy with the results at all so now I take the time to do, do those lines and I have tried to make myself a little uh, jig, a little guide for these lines in uh, some cardboard but it did not turn out well, it wasn't practical. So I'm just using my ruler, trying to have everything straight and I've also started drawing lines to have my pictures straight since the incident with the film notebooks and all these posters not being aligned. An ephemera I like to uh, take from restaurants is this um, is this uh, chopstick wrapper. We went to an all-you-can-eat uh, Asian restaurant, and one tip I saw in a scrapbook video was to remove layers from ephemera before sticking them down, so that your notebook or scrapbook doesn't bulk. I like uh, putting ephemera so that they can break up the page and it's just not one column of text. And uh, I realized that I made a mistake in my uh, journal entry here for the 22nd. Uh, I was confused because I went to this uh, charity shop on two occasions and for some reason I thought that this was the first time I went and I talked about this first time instead of talking about the second time and it was bugging me a lot. So I had to cut a bigger piece of this craft paper and glue it on the page, which was very disappointing because I really like this page. I loved how simple it was with stamping and the stickers and the bird stamps, but it couldn't be helped. It really was bugging me. So the way I did it was that I first wrote down the last words that needed to be on the page and then I calibrated my journaling so that it would fit perfectly in this space and it worked out all right. I also drew lines so that it would be uh, so that the text would be aligned with the other columns of text.
is a binder where I keep a graph paper on which I write all the books I have read since 2006. So it's been 15 years, has it? Okay, so it's been 18 years I've had this reading, I call it a register, this reading register for 18 years. And I did not take it with me while I was traveling, so I had to update it. I always write with a fountain pen. And here is a very cheap Pelican uh, fountain pen. It's, just, it's a German brand that I like. I simply write the title of the novel, the name of the author, and the date I started reading and the date I finished. I also write down if this was an audiobook. And the little stars on the left signify if I have finished the book yet. I also have different pages for graphic novels, for short stories I read on my e-reader, and other sections in my binder that I could show you if you are interested. And that day I was really needing some mindless, satisfying work, and I decided I wanted to copy this page uh, because I don't know if you can really see it on camera but I had been using a fountain pen that I would fill up with a with ink from a bottle and it would dry out between uses and when I started every time I started using it again the ink would be thicker and have the sheen and never really dry fully so I was in a really good mood. I was not in a really good mood, but it wasn't the perfect mindset to just need copy some stuff and not think about anything, so I decided to copy it down and to do it very neatly. And I did not film that, but I also uh, copied down other pages and it was really, really relaxing. I had a thought that I wanted to have different colours on my page. I've been using a uh, red marker with my fountain pen since yeah for 18 years. That's the um, that's the colour combination I've been using. And I decided to be a little bit uh, adventurous and use a different colour so that on the page to differentiate between two years because at the beginning of the page it's the, the books read in 2021 and then I go to 2022 in one single page and I wanted to differentiate between them and I decided to use this Mindliner which is a mustard color so I thought it would go nicely with the red so I'm trying it out, I'm not sure I will like uh, it in the end I don't like that it's much thicker than my current marker
I started writing down my um, the books I had read when I was in high school. And I started in my planner, in my school planner. And then I migrated onto graph paper because it's what I had for school supplies. And if I were to start now, I would use a pretty notebook maybe or some really high quality paper. But because it's been the way I've been doing it since I've been doing this for 18 years and I don't I don't feel like changing it. I it would be much prettier in another way, but I love how simple it is. I love that it's unique to me that I came up with this system when I was 16, I think. And I like how the pages evolve slightly throughout the years with the uh, color of the ink changing, the markers not being the same brand, so the red is not the same on all the pages. And I don't really care that it's not pretty, it's my own, it's completely disconnected from social media. It's not anything I show anyone, it's just for me. And yeah, it's, it's going to continue being very simple and very not interesting, I guess. I thought it would be fun to film myself every time I was at my desk to have an idea of what I was doing there because sometimes at the end of the day I'm like I have no idea what I did today and I must have spent hours at my desk and I think it's interesting to see the different things I do working in my reading journal register, working in my film notebook, you'll see other stuff later, uh, working in my scrapbook uh, working on my computer, editing videos. I just think it's a nice mix and I've been liking watching videos of people working in their own notebooks and in a very simple way, just having music sometimes and watching them work is very relaxing to me, so I hope it will be relaxing to you too. So I said that I didn't mind that my uh, system was not very pretty, but one thing that I could improve was is the binder I'm using because it was just a binder that was lying at home and the dividers. The dividers are all dividers I had in my school binders but I thought I have all of this pretty scrapbook paper making maybe I can make some custom dividers and see how I like it. First I thought I would do the main part of the divider in this peach cream color and I would hide the design, the little illustration that I didn't like under this uh, a band of floral paper so that it would create a little design on the page. I also thought I would use the same paper to make the little tab on the right of the page. And it was very simple to do, I just glued it over the illustration I didn't like I trimmed a little band of paper for the tab on the right and it wasn't as complicated as I had feared. I was able to use my corner rounder for some of the corners. But as it turned out, I did not like how it looked. There was, it wasn't ugly, but it, it did not do it for me. And when I flipped it and I saw this uh, full page of the floral pattern, 
I, I had an idea, I flipped it and I thought why don't I put the peach color band on the left and have the design be mainly the floral paper. So I used a scrap of the peach paper, glued it on the other side of the divider I had made because I didn't want to make one from the beginning and not use the paper. I decided to try to use my label maker again because I'm ever so the optimist but this went as well as you can imagine. Um, you could not really read what I had tried to punch which was lecture which means readings. It wasn't really legible and the letters were too bunched up together so I used a marker to go over it this was a Posca marker because it's acrylic paint, so you can write over this plastic tab. And I did not, I filmed the process, but my head was in the shot, so you won't see it, but it's fine. I still like the look of the black label on the divider, and I think I'm going to make other dividers for the rest of the binder. I just didn't do it that day because it took me a bit of time to do this first one because I basically had to do it twice. And maybe next I will try to decorate the binder or I will finally buy a new binder. But I like the idea of using a binder I had lying at home. I've had my own Christmas tree for several years and I've always wanted to have a pretty simple Christmas tree with a simple color scheme and natural elements on it. So the first year I made this garland out of uh, wooden beads I had found on the discount store, so a pack of 50 wooden beads was like 90 cents or something. And I used twine that I had uh, wrapped around one of my presents that year. But the garland was too small for my tree and when I went back to the discount store to buy more of the beads to make other garlands, there weren't any more. So since then, every year I've made a new garland for the tree. And this year I finally have enough garlands to, for all of my tree and I wanted to film the process to, see, to show how simple it was. Uh, these are simple wooden beads um, and this year I decided to be very creative and add another design of bead to my garlands with these ribbed ones you can see on the left. And this did not take a long time, I was watching a show and I did not even finish an episode I think. I just, the only thing I would tell you that's useful is I wrapped some tape around the end of the twine I was using so, so that it made it easier to have the, the beads going through, otherwise the twine just disintegrates a bit and makes it harder. And then you just have to remove the tape or just cut the little bit that was under the tape. Every so often I try to separate the beads a little bit so that you can see the twine. I like this look better than having a very like concentrated number of beads. And at the end I just made a knot and that's it. It's simple to uh, cut or remove the knot if you want to add more beads or change the design. I hope you liked this uh, new kind of video. I want to make it a series to show you what I do at my desk usually. And yes, maybe I can film myself drawing or setting up for my little business that I want to start selling uh, my illustrations. I think it would be nice to document how you can start a business like that. Thank you for watching the video and I'll see you next time. Bye!